Welcome back, perfect peeps, to Perfect Dev. Today on the podcast, we have Patrick Martin. Hello, Patrick. Hey, how's it going? It's wonderful. Uh, Patrick, uh, Patrick is a developer advocate on Firebase with a focus on the needs of game developers. He has uh, over a decade of experience shipping phone and tablet games and robotic toys and now spends his time helping game developers build connected, dynamic games. That's, That's amazing. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I think I forgot, as always with me, Brittany Postma. Hello, Brittany. Hello. Nice to be here. So uh, the reason we had Patrick on, he wrote this little blog post about uh, Firestore and uh, games and how it's now in beta. And I just was like, we need to talk about this. We're web developers, but I always like want to be a game developer because my son always wants to be a game developer. So I was like, perfect timing. Tell me more, please. <laughs> so I'm really happy to have you on, Patrick. I feel like uh, so many people start out that way, right? You you get a computer, then you're like, oh, man, I want to make a video game now. Yeah. <laughs> and then you realize, like, wow, this takes a little bit of effort. And you're like, maybe I don't. <laughs> exactly. No. no, no, it's all good. <laughs> so uh, the first question that we have, the, the title of this pod is uh, Firestore for Unity and C++. And that's a lot of, like, words. Well, what is Unity? So uh, Unity is a really popular game engine. Um, uh, you, you'll see it. Uh, you know, there, there are a lot of like major in, indie releases built in it. It's uh, built around C plus or C sharp. Um, so it, it's a relatively easy, easy engine, an easy language to get to uh, cut your chops in, especially like compared to like something like C plus plus or C. Mm -hmm. um, and it has a lot of a lot of the things that just make your life easier, right? Like there's a 3D and a 2D level editor so you can like place everything on screen. You don't have to like, you know, draw on graph paper and be like, I'm gonna put a guy there or something. Um, and uh, it's, um, as far as engines go, it's like relatively easy to work with. Like as far as engines that you actually have to write code in. Is it so. is it similar to like Unreal or is it kind of bigger than that? It's, uh, I mean, Unreal and Unity, uh, there's a lot of overlap between them. Like, I wouldn't be doing either justice if I said, like, Unreal couldn't do mobile or Unity couldn't do AAA. But generally, Unreal um, is uh, more popular for, like, you know, desktop-centric, like, PC, Mac-centric games or, like, console. And um, Unity, at least, I got into it because it had really good iOS support back in the earlier days of like iOS development. Um, and it has, has a fairly decent mobile story. But again, both of them, they're, they're, it's very similar to Unreal. It's newer, I think. Yeah, definitely newer. And um, yeah, has different set of trade-offs. Does it work like kind of putting the coding blocks together? Or is it more like you have to write like the individual lines of code? How does that side work? I mean, it kind of depends on how you decide to build your game. They, I believe Unity just acquired this um, company that made something called Bolt, which is kind of a visual programming language. Um, Unreal has something very similar called Blueprints, where like um, it's really, uh, it's really like crazy to me as someone who like you know started doing like engine work that like all these big games are being made by like dragging wires into nodes but like a lot of folks do a lot of like um developing in that so both engines can kind of do that um but unity has this um like the typical model of a unity game and i say typical people can do all sorts of crazy things with it um is that you, you have like a set of game objects. If you're familiar with the concept of a scene graph, these are scene graph nodes. If not, just know like, you know, persons running around, that's a game object. And then uh, you um, modify like the behavior with scripts that you write called um, mono behaviors. Mono because it was originally based on like, you know, the mono C sharp runtime. Um, and you use these to kind of like um, build up behavior. And like this, this is where I say like it depends on your game architecture. Some folks will just make a big old traditional game loop, shove it into like a C sharp DLL, and just import that into uh, Unity. Whereas you can like break all the way down to like, um, you know, 
if my character moves, I put on like a moving game object, like, and you have no concept of like, you you might not have a concept of a player at all. You just have like control by keyboard game object that you throw on, or not game object, mono behavior that you throw on there and mm -hmm. like build up your uh, um, game through composition. So like it leaves it up to you. It kind of leans that way. They have a new thing called um, the data oriented tech stack, which uses a architecture known as entity component system, which I think is really cool. It's still in the early days, but when I used to build game engines with my games, I was always leaning towards uh, like ECS style architectures, entity component systems. So is it for for a non gamer uh, or non game yeah. developer at least um, like myself? Is it easy to get into Unity to start learning? Um, kind of what Unity is all about. I mean, so it depends on your like current proficiencies, but like C sharps a really easy language to pick up, okay. and Unity. I think um, an opinion I had in the early days of Unity when I first picked it up was a. a they made, at least at the time, a lot of architectural decisions I disagreed with, but those decisions were um, done in order for like for ease of use or ease of programming versus like you know pure efficiency. Like yeah. Unreal, I feel like it has like you know it's an older engine for like less powerful computers, so it like stems from a day when like you probably couldn't waste a cycle, right? Yeah. Where like um, Unity came in later. It's like, oh yeah, we're using C Sharp. This is cool. <laughs> I, like at first they didn't even use that. They used something uh, very similar to JavaScript that they called Unity Script. Okay. And like it, it kind of evolved over time as like, you know, demand pent up. Like it started to turn into like a more performant game engine. But I still think it's <laughs> probably the easier of the two to pick up. But also that means like larger product projects um, since Unity is less opinionated um, if you're not careful, your game kind of degrades into spaghetti a little faster. But what is the difference between C, C++, and C Sharp? I hear these <laughs> interchangeably, and yeah. I know a little bit of C, but is that something that you could like use interchangeably or no? Uh, so, so I'm going to be careful here because a lot of people say C, C++, <laughs> right? And they're really very different languages. But um, C, C is like kind of you know one of the early early-ish programming languages, um, I think comes from like the 80s or 70s is, how old is my KNRC book? Um, but, uh, it's an old one for sure. Yeah. <laughs> but like straight up C, um, when you look at it, kind of like, it's not quite fair to call it like structured assembly because like, you know, it's easier to read than that, but you can kind of tra trace like almost every call you make into C, if not into assembly, into like, knowledge of what the system's doing, right? But mm -hmm. it comes with that the low level. Um, yeah, it, it's difficult. Like the first the first edition of the KNRC booklet, the like one that everyone kind of like holds up as like this is what C is, didn't even have a way to allocate dy dynamic memory, right? Like that was a operating system level where like now it has like malloc and free is like standard library calls. But um it, it's kind of like super low level. It has like very few keywords and operators. So in a way, it's really easy to learn. Like you only need to learn like 20 keywords and you're like off to the races. But also that means that there's not much, uh, there's not much helping you, right? Like you can just um, allocate all the, I actually did this in a game once. I allocated all the memory in my computer and just kept on going with like system paging, like in one of my first like student games until I used up the entire, my entire hard drive in a page file. Oh, wow. was my game I like, like unplayably okay. slow. My computer's yeah. just locked up. I'm going to let it like see what, what keeps going. So, so like, yeah. For, for those uh, getting started today, like obviously C is, it's great. Like engineers usually use C still today for, for very embeddable products. Yeah. But um, for gamers, like I've, I've written games in like JavaScript based uh, gaming systems, but the C sharp aspect seems really easy to get into for unity. What is the deciding factor when you kind of start to pivot there between like, should I write something in C plus plus versus unity, which is C sharp based? Is, is there a, a nice way to get into that C++ side still? Uh, yeah, like, um, so the first language I really learned in like, you know, a classroom setting was Java. Um, and I went from 
Java to C um, fairly easily. Like the the you have to get used to things. Obviously, like C doesn't have classes, <laughs> um, but uh, there there's no like like I guess in the early days they used to be like don't learn basic or like ruin the engineers. There's really nothing like that. Like I'm even considering teaching my daughter basic first because it's very Englishy looking. Yeah. Um, so like I I think start. My advice is always start with the shortest path to your goal. Like if you want to make a game, you know, JavaScript, just pick up like phaser or, yeah. um, you know, 3JS or something. And then like, if you, if you run into like limits there, like sometimes it's harder to ship on like consoles if you're doing JavaScript development, although that's not necessarily the case anymore. But once you hit a limit, that's like when you can dive down deeper. Would you would you still suggest like if you if you know C plus plus or if that's a, a route that you're heading down, would you say okay, why don't you jump into Unreal Engine for that kind of C plus plus um, decision at that point? I think it depends on um, on everything else around your game. Like yeah. Unreal, mm-hmm. again, this in some ways this isn't fair for me to say because I've done much more Unity dev than Unreal dev. But I feel like Unreal, it's a little harder to make a mobile game. Obviously, they've made huge inroads. Um, when I when I first evaluated both of these engines, Unreal didn't have a Mac editor, which was the thing that stopped me um, yeah. doing iOS dev. But that's no longer a blocker. But like, if either the team you build up is more familiar with Unreal, or you're comfortable with it's like both these engines are free to start with, so like might as well grab them both. Sure. And if you're like, if you feel more comfortable in Unreal, like go that route. Um, a lot of folks don't really touch much C++. They do a lot of blueprints and only drop down when performance demands. Mm-hmm. But otherwise, if you're comfortable in C Sharp or if like there are a lot of Unity developers around, if you're like, hey, I need an artist and the artist knows like Unity, just pick up Unity, right? Oh, okay. Same if they know Unreal, just pick up Unreal. Unless again, you're not comfortable in C plus plus, then maybe stick to, yeah. So I know, um, just kind of. Sorry, Brittany, were you going to say something? Oh no, I was just still wondering, like, if it's the language that um, does the language matter? Then, like, can you use any language with the engine? What's the difference there between the language that you're writing and the engine? So um, it's it's easier to use the language that like the engine really wants to support, right? Okay. So Unity, when I started, kind of supported three languages. There was C Sharp, Unity Script, which was a lot like JavaScript, mm-hmm. um, and Boo, which was a lot like Python. Mm-hmm. But um, really a lot of um, everybody either went to Unity Script because they're familiar with JavaScript syntax, or they went to C Sharp because they're more used to like you know other C Sharp engines like um, Mono Game or XNA, and then just over time C Sharp took over. With Unreal, uh, like it, it's C plus plus. You can obviously use like any language that can compile to C plus plus. There's okay. like a heavy heavy preprocessor there, so like definitely something you would definitely want something that compiles to C plus plus instead of like directly to LLVMIL, or at least, or that that's how, that, that would be my assumption at least. But uh, you're really like, you're gonna find more tutorials with C++, you're gonna like, then like say a language, um, like NIM is one that I like to use that compiles down to C. But like, just since there are tutorials in C++, if you're starting out, go with like the one they recommend. Okay. Yeah, so uh, I, the the one thing on on Unity that's pretty cool, and I, I think it's a big reason why Firebase, um, you know, kind of picked that that um, platform to support as well. It's hugely popular, but um, you can also deploy it out to iOS, Android, Windows. Uh, I know Stadia. I think has apps for it. Um, you know, just a ton of different locations. So they want to be able to like support those those different OSs um, for sure. Do you see in the near future Firebase kind of opening up that support to other gaming engines soon? Or is it kind of let's focus and, and get what we know really well on both C++ and, and Unity for now and then kind of expand later? 
So the thing I'll say is I can't uh, I can't reveal future direction. Sure. Right? Um, the uh, yeah, that was a bit of a loaded yeah. question. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, the the C plus plus SDK um, will work with um, will work with any C plus plus engine with the caveat that um, engines like to be really creative with their build systems. And the C++ SDK uses what's called CMake as its primary system. So I know Unreal developers some uh, sometimes have a hard time like uh, shoving those CMake build files um, into like Unreal's like Unreal actually has a build system written in C sharp, which is really interesting. <laughs> um, but uh, I've done some like I've done a code lab for C++ in Unity, and I use the Cocos 2D engine, and it was just yeah, mainly because it already used CMake as its build system, so I had to do like less work. But yeah, just any any C++ game engine should theoretically work. There's cool. the other caveat that the um, Firebase SDK is really only built for. Um, it's only built to ship games with on iOS and Android, and then it has um, what we call beta support for um, Mac, Windows, and Linux. And that beta is intended to improve like um, your development time, so you don't have to build all the way down to a device. Although since it is an actual legit implementation and it's open source, there's nothing necessarily stopping you from shipping a desktop game, but it, is not like a super well supported path right now. Do you yes. work with an emulator? Uh, so um, since I do a lot of Unity work, uh, the Unity editor doesn't uh, build build the emulator or um, the Android emulator. The Hacksome one is actually like emulating an x86 Android device, and Unity doesn't support x86 Android builds right now. So. I don't, <laughs> and that, that's that's one of the reasons why um, why we built up the C plus plus SDK to begin with, because uh, you can just press play in the Unity editor and it'll play in your computer, but it plays as like a Windows game, right? So we had to, or like a Mac game, whatever OS you're building on. Yeah. So we had to make Windows and Mac and Linux SDKs so that developers could just press play in the Unity editor and like see the see the game's behavior, mm -hmm. and then once they like got it refined, you can do a build to a device and do like QA on it or like um, actually testing. Like you'll be surprised how many times like uh, minor tweaks in like how far a like, you know, swipe goes can like change the way a game feels. Mm -hmm. So like building down to a device and actually testing it out on a real screen is important. Sounds very so different than website design <laughs> and <laughs> development. Yeah. I, I somewhat buried the lead a little bit here. So I, I want to make sure um, that the first piece of our title was was Firestore, right? Um, yeah. For the for this pod. And it, this has been a fantastic conversation. So I didn't want to like diverge any, but like we're 18 minutes in and uh, the Firestore subject hasn't come up yet. So I definitely want to talk through, you know, for people that don't know what Firebase is or what Firestore is, um, Firebase has for sure changed around their marketing um, style. So it took took me a minute to find this main page. I, I don't know why, but um, so if you go to firebase.google.com slash games, uh, they have this cool new uh, page that's that's out here right now. And the, the thing that I want to like just bring up everything we're talking about and why we're talking about Unity and C++ uh, surrounding Firebase. Patrick, of course, works for Firebase um, on, on that team as a, a dev advocate. And as you look through this, some of the, the options that are out here are very similar to the rest of the items that we would use on a normal web page. So Cloud Firestore, real-time database, Cloud Functions, Cloud Storage, Hosting. I, I don't get the hosting one, but maybe we can talk about that further. Um, and then all kinds of stuff like you would use on your normal like mobile based things with test lab and crashlytics. Um, and then, you know, the, the engaging parts that do predictions and, and cloud messaging and things like that. So that's kind of why we brought Patrick on was to talk not only because I love Firestore and I'm a Firestore GDE, but I don't know anything about games. And so 
I always get questions like, could you use this on, on Unity? Could you do that? And what just was released, and the reason we brought Patrick on was uh, Cloud Firestore just switched, and I'm going to get this wrong, but uh, it switched just from alpha to beta now, correct? That is correct, yeah. Awesome. So yeah, what we want to kind of start to break down a little more is what does that mean? Like, can people finally start writing uh, more, maybe not sophisticated, but they, they can use Firestore uh, more easily within their games? So what I would say is like when it was still alpha and people asked me like, can I use Firestore in a game? I'd be like, well, you can, but be ready for like, you know, bugs and uh, for the API to maybe change if we if we decide that it's really hard to do something um, this one way. Like alpha, we're still experimenting a little, right? Um, whereas now that it's beta, um, I'm told the API could still theoretically change, but like it would, ha would have to go through a lot. Like I, I think there was one change they were telling me between like beta and release on like Android. So it's it's much more stable. There are fewer bugs, there are still a few. And um, since, uh, since the C++ SDK is open source, you can just see any issues there and track them. But for the most part, it's like, it is, pretty ready for production use. Like you still have to like have a little bit of a stomach of like maybe something's going to go wrong or I might have to like wait for a new update, but um, it won't be, won't be nearly as bad. And I'd be comfortable using Firestore now in my own game as opposed to alpha. Like maybe, maybe leave that for like the, the test game. And if like nothing breaks in like pre-production, then consider taking it forward. So it's definitely much better to use now. <laughs> And I want to be a little bit careful, like when we're talking about, um, you know, alpha beta for Firestore, because that's not to confuse it with the rest of the Firebase SDK, correct? Um, right. So like sign-in, for instance, that's been around forever for games, right? Yep. That, that one's super stable. Um, obvious caveat I mentioned before, desktop support is beta. So all everything is beta for desktop and like, Auth is there, but some products are missing entirely. Like there's no, there's no Google Analytics for desktop. So like a lot of anything that relies on analytics doesn't work there. But for the most part, yeah, Firebase is um, stable unless there's a beta tag on the product. <laughs> Very cool. So uh, I, I think coming from a web development world, um, it's it's pretty easy to compare the two. If if I was to make like a game, my head would still like go web first when I want to make like a, even an Android game, let's say, um, and I would start to build that out. What are some of the advantages instead of like thinking that way um, and and going down like let's say I want to build my first Android game and it's Tetris style game. Um, I would initially like, okay, let's let's make sure sign ins in there. I can get someone logged in. Um, but what about like that that engineering part, like the WebGL side? In my mind, how does that equate over in gaming, or like how do you get started on on that gaming side for people? Yeah, so um, I guess that the first thing to point out is that WebGL would be is actually kind of lower level than what Unity gives you, right? Like um, if you use something like 3GS or Babylon.js, that's closer to Unity, except um, Unity has like this whole packaged up like, um, you know, editor and like, um, yeah, build tools and stuff. Is, but, there, yeah. is there like an easy way to like one click install a, a base setup for like a game for Firestore or like a Git repo that you could start to use? We, we do have a getting started Git repo. Um, it's not, uh, I think, Unity quick start on GitHub. I'm sure I can find the, I'll find the link and make sure you can get it for your show notes. Okay, cool. Um, we have, uh, it's not necessarily like best practices for like building a game. Uh, the, the quick start repo is more or less what the engineering team actually uses to like uh, verify the functionality of each release. So it's like super bare bones, um, architected kind of oddly um, if you're a Unity developer, but you can just check it out and like see Firestore running. And as far as like um, getting a game going, like you just click new project in Unity and you have a game that you can like deploy everywhere. Um, and we, uh, the way Firestore is packaged um, 
it, it's in something called a Unity package, which is more or less a zip file that Unity understands. And each Unity package has all everything a game needs, all the dependencies to use a Firebase feature. So if you've used like Firebase on other platforms, you might know that like you know uh, there's like always a Fire Firebase core or something package that every Firebase product relies on, and some products like will rely on Auth or something or analytics. So, so is, is this Firebase Unity SDK what you would like download to get started like writing? Because you wouldn't open up like we would just do Visual Studio Code or something like that. Open up the editor and start writing the code. So what yeah, would so, you download? So you, you, you would download and it's all Unity, um, create a new game. And then the okay. Firebase SDK has these Unity packages in it. And when you open that Unity package, it'll pull everything you need in. It'll handle like Unity doesn't necessarily have a great dependency management system you can hook into like um, NPM or something. So the, this Unity package has everything you need. That's what I, what I was getting with with Firebase okay. Core. So you just like click the Firestore one and everything else that Firestore needs gets pulled in. Very cool. Do you have to worry about any like performance items? So I know on the web, we always are like, should we lazy load loading up Firebase because it's a little bit larger than, you know, other things that we might be running. Do you run into that as much with games or are people okay with like a loading screen usually? Uh, people are like, I mean, the Unity engine takes a long time to load. <laughs> um, that, that's one of um, Unity does support like a WebGL target. But I know um, a lot of developers tend to prefer like web native game engines when they can, just because of how much gets pulled in. And I know Unity is working with like Project Tiny and stuff to uh, make that smaller, like make that palatable for like interactive ads or something. Yeah, cool. But um, Unity itself is big, so Firebase will take some like some time to load. But on for the games SDK, we thread as much as we can. So um, and I actually, um, threading's a little complicated in Unity. So like, we've actually had to build like videos and stuff. Like, how do you get back onto the main thread and stuff, right? <laughs> so um, we'll automatically kick stuff off to the background thread. Firebase is lazy loaded by default. So as soon as you call dot default instance, um, it will lazy load everything needed down the chain. Nice. Um, and then, yeah, everything just happens asynchronously. So um, because games, games, you have something like, 33 milliseconds, like a 30th of a second mm -hmm. uh, to get, or yeah, um, to get like everything done for a frame, right? And if you if you miss that boundary, like 60 milliseconds or 33 milliseconds, depending on your frame rate, like your game visually hitches. Oh. Um, so, so the um, Firebase SDK does as much as it can on the background so that like it's not blocking, like, you know, you, you don't want to like, wait for a couple hundred milliseconds for a web call to come back when you have like, you know, <laughs> tens yeah. of milliseconds, uh, like hard limit on where you can get. Really make your game janky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think um, a lot of people have probably used uh, Firebase products in the past for building up their, their games, um, have probably used the real-time database if they were using it. Um, and now with this, this kind of release of Firestore coming in there, um, and for those who don't know, real-time database is more like a JSON-based um, uh, database. And then Firestore is more like a document and collection-based database. Um, I would say Firestore probably is a little more powerful, but there's some cool aspects to the real-time database with syncing and, and things like that. What are some decision points when you start into like creating a game? What what kind of when you when you like set to layout should i use a uh, real real-time database or should i use firestore what is that decision process when you're talking about games how does that look i mean the the hard thing with real-time database is that um you can kind of see firebase's like you know uh web-based um history so like when a game develop when a game developer sees real time database, you'll see this a lot. That folks will be like, "Oh, can I use this for like making my World of Warcraft clone or something?" <laughs> Which it's really not super suited for, right? Um, but uh, so first, you have to like get out of your head, like the get out of the space of games where you're updating, like where you're syncing data at some like regular multiple of the frame, rate, right? Like sending like 
every few frames a position update or something. So neither database is going to be great for that. Um, otherwise, there there is like a decision tree on Firebase's website to choose between real time database or Firestore. Oh. But generally, real time database is good for syncing things really quickly, but not super regularly. I would say in, in like the games context. So like an example I bring up of like kind of like the boundary of where it makes sense is there was this uh, Google Doodle Lotteria, which was a web based game on the uh, homepage on the Google homepage. Uh, and, um, that used real time database and like, it's kind of a bingo game. So every once in a while, a card gets flipped over. Everybody sees the card at the same time. You like try to find it on your board. Then you scream like lotteria to win. So what really needs to get synced quickly is like the new card coming up every few seconds and then making sure when someone screams lotteria comes in in the right order and stuff. So like real time database can handle that sort of thing really well. And it, it has a couple other nice things. Um, there, you have online presence with real-time database, and you'll actually see there's, I believe, a real-time presence extension or online presence extension for a Firestore um, and like for the Firebase extensions setup. But it actually uses real-time database right. to do the presence detection. It's a so, it's a fun yeah. little hack. We do that <laughs> on the web all the time. Yeah. So um, there, there are some things real-time database is really good with. Um, you have. Uh, you can have multiple real-time databases in your um, Firebase project, which, if you want to keep it fast, becomes like it becomes important to shard and like actually measure how slow your database gets under load and figure out how to route um, players to different shards. So that's stuff you because that's stuff you kind of have to think about with real-time database. Like I think there's something like two hundred thousand concurrent connection limit there, whereas Firestore. It still it still syncs really fast. Mm -hmm. Like maybe maybe where you'd wait five hundred milliseconds, you might wait a second, but um, it's still like really quick to make a change, and everybody sees it. And Firestore can scale up to something like a, a million concurrent connections. It does um, it does a lot of like it, it distributes um, the database across like multiple nodes, so like. You kind of get more reliability, better uptime, and stuff. So um, there, there are there are places where you choose each. As far as like game examples, if you're making like one of these hyper, like a hyper casual game where your interaction might be on like minutes, hours, days, then like something like Firestore makes a lot of sense, right? Because um, if I if I like go in every day to collect like my loot for that day, or like um, <laughs> I, I'm like waiting several hours for my farm to build or something. That, that's a, a great use of Firestore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, you'll see real time database used a lot for like, um, you can you use it for guild chat, for instance, or like you have mm -hmm. a bunch of people chatting with each other about like some real time event in their game. Mm -hmm. Or again, like something like tech tac toe or, uh, or Lotteria. Like you kind of, you kind of want it to be turn-based or turn-based feeling, but um, real-time database can approach much, can get much closer to the, like, you know, we're all connected to each other at the same time. So you said there's a flip, a switch you can flip, but can you use both in the same application? Uh, yes. Um, and you can use both for like different parts. Like if you wanted to do okay. matchmaking in real-time database, you could then like fall over to Firestore for the actual game. And there, there are like other than performance, there are like uh, cost reasons why you'd want to do this. I forget off the top of my head, but um, one of them you charge by like you know the query, and the other is more heavily charged by like the amount of storage. Mm -hmm. So I, I think real time database is more charged by the storage. So you would like maybe do stuff that updates rapidly there, like finding a match or something, and mm -hmm. then like for playing out a game, you might jump over to Firestore. Where like you're more like trying to like look up a specific document or something like that. Yeah, and the the great part about Firestore too is you can get into like collections um, as well. So you only have to pay for like that breakdown. So if you have, let's say, a user has uh, coins in a game, is probably a decent example, and you have a coin list of these items that they've pulled. If you're just trying to access that users. Um, collection of coin data, 
that's all you get billed against when you read that collection versus real time when you have that it's it's massive because it's that full json payload that you have to pull back so mm -hmm. there's a there's a lot that goes into like any of these hosted uh, no sql databases whether you're on dynamo or anything else you have to kind of really evaluate you know what is going to hit so hard against your databases and and pick the the correct one as well so i will i will definitely put the link out for uh comparing the two for firestore in real time database i know we're we're probably just scratching the surface um for the different the different like ways to use firebase and firestore within um gaming is there any other like actual games like you would use like game styles like a first person shooter you know something like that that would dictate whether you even want to use firestore or is there any limitations that you can see going down that in the future i mean for for first person shooter i probably would not use firestore with, with, with various caveats right like um maybe i wanted a high score with a replay then maybe i would put my like high score table in Firestore, like replay data in cloud storage, and then like save that off in the for the first person shooter. But um, for something like that, I would want like a hosted service. Like uh, Google Cloud actually has Google Cloud hosted game servers, which are built on um, Agonis and OpenMatch, which would be really good for like hosting, like hosting the actual, um, you know, networky fighting each other part of like a first person okay. shooter. Like, you know, that, that will be like, full on UDP connection, like actually running a dedicated server somewhere. That's really what you want for those kinds of games. Uh, for something like uh, for, like Firestore, I did um, a lot of board game, of uh, digital board game work before. Like I worked on Monopoly for iOS and Android. Um, and th that would be a great, a great use case for Firestore because you kind of take your, take turns. You like, mm -hmm. you know, roll the dice, move around. Um, it doesn't matter if like there's a second or so latency. I think the most real time thing with Monopoly is the uh, auctions, which a lot of people turn off. But I, I would say leave those on. It makes the game a little more fun. <laughs> and uh, even then, you you can uh, tweak it a bit to like so that the Firestore latency doesn't matter. But um, like stuff like that is great for Firestore. Um, again, like if you're getting like as you start to come in close like close to a real-time game, but still like turn-based-y. Um, real-time database would be great for like, say a MUD or multi-user dungeon. Um, I'm actually playing around with making a tutorial right now doing that. Or like, so players kind of move around. It's kind of like, it's slower than a first person shooter, but still like relatively fast. And you want to know exactly what cell like your opponents are on and stuff. So like, it, it's good for those things. And then like in-game chat or, uh, um, is a great use for a real-time database. Okay. Very cool. Yeah, is there anything else that I'm just completely missing? As you, as you can tell, I'm a web developer, so yeah. I'm like missing all the like game development questions. Is there anything else that, that our audience should know, maybe that our web developers trying to get into game development that you'd suggest? I mean, I would say... The, the, the skill sets are not like co are actually merging more than than they're uh, digressing, right? Like w when I started out doing games, there wasn't WebGL, and now right. there, there are categories of games. I'd probably just make web first now. That like you know back when I started, pretty much had to be C plus plus or something. So it, it's not if you want to make games, just do it. Unity is a great way to jump in if you're a web developer. Uh, use like one of the many web-based toolkits. I know Coco's creator is big, 3JS, Babylon.js, Phaser. So um, yeah, there, there's a, a lot of great resources. And um, yeah, Very it, cool. it's not that bad. <laughs> No, it's awesome. Well, I, I guess with that said, I think those are some great suggestions. Brittany, any additional questions? I know you're more of a gamer than I am. Maybe not a game developer, but for sure a gamer. Yeah, not a game developer. Just on my side, it's confusing going from the website, like you said. So, I mean, I know that you can like make some games with React and then they have React Native and things where you could do mobile games. But that's um, some of those things that you said, what for a JavaScript developer, where would you go specifically? Like which one of those is the closest that you would use? 
So it gets tricky um, based on like your, your preferences and skill set. Um, I know Coco's Creator is a JavaScript based um, game engine. They just hit Coco's Four, which has um, 3D support now. Okay. Um, and that that has a full on editor, a lot like Unity's editor, and then like mm -hmm. it lets you just write JavaScript in there. Um, I had I worked with a non technical designer at one of my jobs, so he didn't write any code, but still made all his prototypes. Like, didn't make any shipping code, but made all of his prototypes in Phaser, which is a JavaScript based game engine that I think there is like an editor somewhere, but it doesn't ship with like the download. So like you 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 do a lot of like just the layout and JavaScript and stuff, and like it's a really popular way to get started with building games on the web. How do how do the styles work and the design on that side of things? Because you don't have CSS, right? Uh, I mean, it, it depends on the game, but generally, no, right? Like uh, yeah. most most web based game engines will uh, will just pop up like a canvas and either like WebGL into that or like you know just do canvas rendering stuff. Oh, okay. Um, but at the very least, um, text is hard. I can give you all sorts of like horror stories of building a custom text engine in like early mobile games. So a lot of web devs, as I understand it, like to just use CSS and whatnot to like lay out like, you know, health or player dialogue or something. And then they use the uh, WebGL stuff to um, do the actual rendering. Actually, this was one of one of the Monopoly games I worked on for the iPad. We did something very similar to that where we rendered the entire game in like an embedded GL view. So like, you know, all like the board and stuff. But then uh, we used core animation for all the HUD elements. It just made it so much easier to like oh, lay things out and like do like animations in 2D and stuff and gave like, back then it was a custom engine. So like it actually empowered the artists to do layouts as opposed to like show us sampling, showing us sample renderings and like trying to get an engineer to match it. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Nice. Awesome. Well, Patrick, thank you so much. This this part of the show, we get into our perfect picks, as you know, and uh, you were so kind to to fill out your perfect picks before we even jumped on the podcast, which is a rare thing, surprisingly. <laughs> um, oh, <man. laughs> your, your pick is up first. What is this? So uh, I just got into this game called Loop Hero. It's a roguelike kind of RPG um, that I've been uh, addicted to at least this weekend. Uh, it, it's like it looks super old school, right? Like old, like DOS, like Ultima style graphics. And your little dude just walks around this uh, path automatically and fights enemies automatically. It's up to you to like collect these cards, which are lands that you put around that like give you resources or like spawn different enemies. And you fight them, collect gear, and then like fight a boss and you just loop. And then um, the rogue light element is. You go back to your camp. Um, like it's kind of a risk reward thing. If you go to the camp when you pass it, you cl you keep all your resources. If you go like somewhere in the middle, you keep like sixty percent, or if you die, like thirty percent. And then you like build up your camp for new cards, new abilities, stuff like that. Did you so say Ultima yeah. style graphics? Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. If you look at Ultima the screenshot Online here, it's like really was my yeah. First MMO. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was your first what? What was it? My first MMO, Mul massive oh. multiplayer online game. <laughs> That's role playing awesome. game is like the end of that, but MMORPG. Very cool. Yeah, see, this is how much of a I'm not a gamer. I wish I was. I, oh, yeah, World I, World I kept hearing people World. talk about this on Twitter. I'm like, <laughs> uh, maybe I should check this out. And then, like, I lost like hours. <laughs> so do, you, do you feel like not? I usually don't loop it back. Like, we're just have fun with this usually. But again, I'm so clueless when it comes to games. Um, like, could all these things be stored off in Firestore, though? This game, like, it's a it's a single player game, so there's that. But uh, th this would be a great like a great example of either, yeah, like as it is, this would be a great Firestore thing if you wanted to do like online sync. So like, you know, your resources at the end just sync it up to us to the server. We didn't even touch on like during this that like Firestore and real time database handle like offline caching and then like um, conflict resolution. Which when I was working on like. Um, mobile social games in a custom engine, like 90% of our bugs were 
the user drove into a tunnel, did something, and then logged in with a different device. Like, wh what do you do? So, like, <laughs> Firestore and real-time database kind of handle those cases as gracefully as you can. Um, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I, I think they do a fantastic job. Those are the tough ones for sure. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, and your second pick. So um, I, I should say that like everything I, I've said here is like, you know, my opinions personally, I'm not trying to push anything for Google outside of like, I talk about Firestore because that, that's what brought me here. Right. <laughs> but I've gotten really excited about Flutter and in particular Flutter 2. So I, I've actually, when you bring up building games in React, I've been on and off playing with building games and like the Flutter architecture and, Flutter, yep. and seeing, um, exploding. yeah, seeing uh, like that, that reactive framework is kind of inverted to how um, I would traditionally think about doing a game, right? Like with a game, you have a game loop. It ticks off like every 16 to 33 milliseconds and like you do everything in there. You have to flip it over where like, when your state mutates, you change something. So it's not good sure. for every game, but I, I've just been having a fun time since it's GL backed using Skia, building like little gamey things. And just, I think the darts a really fun language, even though it needs single precision floats. That will be the hell I die on. <laughs> <laughs> I messed around quite a bit with Flutter. Um, I, I think it's a great product. And the only concern I had on the web base, which I think they've finally kind of come around to, um, they were not using a lot of like markup and things. And so the 11Y was, was struggling, but I think they've made massive improvements. And since it's finally officially released for web stability in, in 2.0, I think things are going to take off for sure. Yeah, I, I know they had been looking at it, but I don't, I don't know where it is now. I don't do much web stuff, but yeah, it is Flutter 2 production quality for the web. And yeah. Uh, yeah. When I say I've been doing gamey stuff, like I've been literally trying to build a platformer. So <laughs> I don't even know how you do that with like um, traditional HTML tags or something. Nice. Very cool. Um, I think, yes, Brittany, your pick is next. Okay. Yep. So I was poking around trying to do some research and figure out how to get started with what this podcast is about. And um, I found this doc with, someone that you might recognize from the podcast on it. Who is that? I, I don't even know. Oh. <laughs> Patrick. So, um, yeah, I read through that, and it looks like a really good starter for getting set up with Unity and Firebase. So wanted to throw that up there for people to look at to get started. Patrick, I don't know if I've ever seen you, like, without a hat on <laughs> at any moment that I've ever seen you do anything. Maybe. Well, my, my wife works for a hat shop, so uh, you'll, you'll notice there are even hats up here on the wall behind me. <laughs> this explains it. Very cool. Yeah, uh, this is a cool little tutorial. Love it. What's your next pick, Brittany? So, <laughs> Nightwind CN uh, CSS is my other one that we are currently using on our new version of Coding Cat Dev. It is a Tailwind, um, almost like a plugin that you put in there, and it will just flip the colors for you. So you don't have to go in and specify on each class what color you want it to be in dark mode. Um, you can just put in your regular color class and it will just flip it to the opposite number, which is really kind of makes it a lot easier to add in a dark mode on there. And it's amazing. We love it. Cool. And my pick, um, kind of sticking in the, the Firebase realm of the house, we are also using uh, subscription payments with the the Stripe extension. I better be careful how far I scroll because I forgot I am part of their alpha program. So there might be some things uh, below here that I cannot show. So I'll stay stay right here on the screen. Um, but it's simplified our life massively. Um, it's there's nothing like massively complicated that they've done. Um, they just have some uh, extensions that are essentially Firebase functions, but they're pre built in a way that you can just put in your configuration items up front. Mm -hmm. um, so we've been able to do that in our dev setup. It's been working really well. Um, it works great for subscriptions. They have some interesting thoughts around um, single, like single buy type subscriptions. So um, we have two different options. We allow like member, full member based subscription, but then we also want to do a single course base and we just allow that on a buy now. And the way that I've worked around this so far is you buy now, you 
which you can add a single price to, and then we charge you a zero dollar subscription uh, for the rest of your life, essentially. So mm-hmm. it's it's kind of weird how you have to work through that a little bit, but um, it's it's been a huge time uh, uh, enhancer, time saver. Yeah, yeah, time saver. <laughs> Um, the second one, I think, is maybe out of that course, but uh, this uh, Mecca Hamster is, yeah. um, did you actually, do you get credit for releasing this? I know, like, you have part of this, right, Patrick? Did yeah, I, I have worked on it a little bit. I don't know if any of my changes have ever shipped, but okay. yeah, this is uh, um, one of our sample games with Firebase, where I said the quick start isn't very indicative of how you might uh, structure a game. Mecha Hamster is a shipping game um, that actually shipped with Daydream support. So there was a lot of like hardcore optimization going into it to like make sure you hit like the necessary frameworks and it was comfortable to play and stuff. So yeah, another great example of Firebase. And even though the game itself doesn't lend itself super well to like real time database, you're not going to store the ball position um, in RTDB. Like leaderboards are built using it and whatnot. Is that a corgi? <laughs> oh, oh uh, the oh, picture, no, it's, it's a hamster. hamster. It's yeah. <laughs> clearly a hamster. Wow. It looks kind of like a corgi. Like, oh, it's a, it's cool. like almost like a fox hamster or something. Yeah. I don't know. There's a lot a going on. Space hamster. Yeah. Space hamster. There we go. Well, very cool. Um, yeah. So that's all of our perfect picks. That's our, our pod of perfect.dev. Really appreciate you coming on, Patrick, so much. Um, I, I am a complete novice, if not less than a novice, f- for game development. So yeah, thank you for great. breaking it down for us web developers. Sure thing. No, I, I mean, I, I love talking to folks about this. I, I'm the same way when it comes to web. Like, when you brought up Tailwind, I'm like, I know yeah. people who are talking about that. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> that Tailwind's so hot yeah. right now. Yeah, yeah it's, it's kind of funny. Like, I, I'd love to, you know, head down that Flutter path somehow and do a tutorial on Flutter and gaming. So we might have to touch base in the future. Yeah. You know, right. I, I am really, I'm doing really weird stuff w- with it, though. Like, I, I built a uh, scene graph using their, like, weird atlas system, <laughs> so w- which w- was kind of difficult because they... Um, they don't. They don't give you what you need to do a non-uniform scale. So, <laughs> yeah, it's there's there's a lot of things in Flutter that are like so uh, predetermined. Uh, you know how they they restrict it. It's it's kind of interesting. Like you have to kind of fit within that paradigm. So, I thought you were an Angular developer. <laughs> I am. <laughs> Unfortunately, as much Next.js, I, I had to look something up in Angular the other day. So. <laughs> I you thought you like those standards. Up a new language every six months, or I feel like I'm behind. So, yeah, I, I mean, I love. I almost put Rust down as one of my uh, picks because I, I just love playing with That's new languages crazy. and frameworks. Yeah. yeah, Rust is amazing. I, I love it. Yeah, I, oh. I feel like Rust is going to be the new C plus plus one day, or at least I hope it's really fun. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. We'll see. How, we'll see where that ends up uh, in five years or, or ten years. I don't know how quickly we have to make those judgment calls anymore. Well, there, there's another game engine, uh, Godot, that's getting really popular in the indie community. And I know folks in the local Colorado game developers groups are like looking at using Rust with Godot. So it, I, I'd be really interested to see how that all goes together. Wow! Yeah, ping us if anyone wants to do another pod. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thanks so much again, Patrick. Uh, really loved having you on. Hope to have you on again. Sure thing. Thanks for uh, inviting me. Of course. Right. Thanks. Take See care. Ya. Laters.